Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. Got a question for you. Um, do you have an aftermarket radiator, champion, cold case, whatever, uh, no name brand, something you bought off eBay? Do you have one of those aftermarket radiators on your classic car, classic truck, muscle car, whatever? Uh, the reason why I ask is because at some point in time you may need to replace your radiator cap. Uh, I had to do that very same thing just recently and it caused some issues for me. What do I replace it with? How do I find a replacement radiator cap for an aftermarket radiator? So let's dive into that a little bit uh, uh, in this video uh, and uh, see what we can come up with. Let's get to it. Okay, so I asked my car buddies, what do you do if your aftermarket radiator cap goes bad? Uh, one of them responded by saying, well, I would just go with whatever the manufacturer recommends. Well, what if the manufacturer doesn't use the same kind of filler neck, same size radiator cap, same pressure, same any, any of that stuff? And he's like, well, maybe I would go with the manufacturer of that radiator and say, do you have any replacements? In my case, I've got a... I think it's a Chinese radiator that I bought off of Amazon. It's got the, the aluminum radiator, two or three cores, um, and they don't sell replacement radiator caps. And so, you know, I started looking around and I'm like, what are the sizes? What are the different things that I need to know? And so I, you know, I even looked on YouTube and I didn't see a video on YouTube. So I figured, well, if there's no video that answers, I mean, there's plenty of videos out there on what's a radiator cap do and what's it for and, you know, all of these different basic questions. But when you're replacing your radiator cap and you don't necessarily know where to go, or what to get, what to get, uh, I thought I, I would make a video on that to try to help because some of you may have that very same question right now. Oh, believe it or not, there's actually a lot of different radiator caps out there, different sizes, different depths, different uh, PSI ratings. And that's something else that I want, kind of wanted to cover because the PSI came up for me when I was trying to get the replacement for this. There's no marking on this aftermarket radiator cap that says what PSI it is. That can cause problems. The thing that you want to sort of keep track of on your existing radiator cap is the depth and the width of the uh, outer diameter and the inner diameter of your existing cap maybe that came with that aftermarket uh, radiator. Um, there's, I think it's 2.23, I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, there's like 2.23 and uh, a little bit larger, like two, almost two and three quarters, uh, I'm not sure. But anyways, there's, you know, a, a basic size and then there's a really small one that I think is like one and one something sixteenths. I, again, I'll, I'll list it here. But um, with the older classic cars, there are usually two depths. The most common one is the three quarter inch. There's also a one inch depth radiator cap. Um, and the reason why that's important is you need to get the exact same depth um, of the radiator cap. So you may need to do a search for radiator caps that are 2.23 inches outer diameter or inner diameter and three quarter inch uh, depth. And the reason why that's important is because if you get one that's too long, you'll be compacting it down and the spring will be already, you know, really pushed up and it won't be able to release. Or if it's too, too short and it's a longer depth filler neck, then it's going to be too high and you won't get that seal that you need on the rubber or on the gasket that's on, on the cap. Um, the other thing that's important to know is whether it's an open system or a closed system. Do you have it so that when this releases pressure, it can go to an overflow tank? Or do you not have an overflow tank at all? Depends on how you have it set up. So there's a couple things that you want to look for. The width of the cap, the depth of the cap, whether it's an open or a closed system. Those are the important things that you want to sort of keep track of. Measure, get your tape measure out and measure on the, the cap that came with that aftermarket radiator. So the PSI rating for your radiator cap is the other important number that you need to find. Um, the reason why this, this came up for me was because I needed to find out what the PSI was because it wasn't listed on that cap. Uh, and so I had no idea. Luckily, I reached out through Amazon, asked a question, the manufacturer came back and told me the PSI. 
And so that's the only way I knew. But if, if you're not sure, and you, it does come with a cap that is listed on there, you kind of want to see if you can get the same PSI rating on your cap. Uh, the problem that you can run into is the PSI might not be the best thing for your system. Uh, the reason why I bring this up, and it's very important, is because the radiator cap that came with my aftermarket radiator, the, uh, the manufacturer let me know it was 19 PSI. 19 PSI may not sound like a huge number. Most of the modern cars today are 20, 24, 30, up to 30 PSI. That's usually the industrial stuff. But uh, the race engines for most uh, cars usually have to run on water and so their, their PSI can be 20 to 25 um, uh, and PSI is important because what happens is and if you don't know this if you know it you can just ignore it but what happens is water boils at 212 degrees and so your engine might easily get up to 210 220 and so if it boils over you know that that's a problem that means it's going to start coming out of your cooling system so you want to do that mix of coolant and water. When you do the mix of coolant and water, it goes up to 223 boiling point, 223 Fahrenheit, uh, with a 50-50 mix. If you've got a 70-30 mix, it goes up again, I think it's like 238, 238 Fahrenheit. Uh, so again, with that pressure uh, on your cap, it continues to increase the boiling point number. So if you've got a, I think it's like seven, eight, nine, ten the rating can go up to like 240 degrees Fahrenheit, 250, 260. Uh, so the higher the pressure number, the, the more it, the boiling point goes up. And that may sound like a really, really good thing, right? You might, you might say, well, hey, a 19 PSI means that my, it, it won't boil until like 270 something. And that sounds great, but the problem is, if you've got an older car, and everything else besides maybe your aftermarket radiator, which that aftermarket radiator may be perfectly fine for 16, 17, 18, 20 PSI, the rest of your system may not be able to handle that. Keep that in mind. So yeah, that's where I thought I had a problem with my aftermarket radiator and the radiator cap. Because it was rated for 19, that's great. I, the boiling point's really, really nice and high for the coolant water mix that I had in the truck. But what's not great is having something that high, and you guys may run 19 and yours or 20 and yours, and you may think everything is great. And if it works for you and you have no problems, that's cool. But where I was concerned is I had a problem on the power tour. Last day, day number five, I had a leak. Uh, my fairly new lower radiator hose developed a leak. I have a video, I can link it up here. But my uh, fairly new low radiator hose developed a leak just a little bit. It was just running out when it was under pressure. So I replaced, I had a video where I actually replaced the lower radiator hose. And everything was fine, right? And then I went to Pontiac Nationals. And I got home. And there was another leak. And so I waited a day to kind of check it out. And when it dried, I noticed that there was sort of uh, the white spatter on the side of the, uh, the radiator. That means that this cap had failed. It had given up and it was kind of running down the side. I didn't have a leak again in the hose, but things are continuing to fail. Why are things continuing to fail? Why did my new hose fail? Why did this cap fail? I think it was because the pressure was too high and I think the very next thing that could have failed would have been the heater core. Uh, when you've got a really high pressure on your system, um, if I were to go buy a stock radiator cap for my 1985 C10, they recommend a 16 PSI and not 19 so if I, I had a really high pressure going into uh, the hoses into the seals that were on my water pump even to my head gaskets most certainly to my heater core and so yeah your radiator may be able to handle that but your heater core may not be able to your hoses may not be able to so that's where I actually decided I'd go with this stant and I'm gonna go with a 15 um, same size same depth everything else I mean I tried it on and it works fine I'll try it out, but I have a feeling that things are going to run a little more smoothly with my cooling. So yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. Keep in mind the PSI rating on your aftermarket uh, radiator. You may go check and see what's on there now. See if it's got a number on it. See if you can tell what PSI it is. And I think this is a really important thing that I did not know about. 
And so yeah, I kind of wanted to share that today. Hopefully this helps you out in some way. And if I'm getting anything wrong, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, like this if you get anything out of it. And I'd really love it if you could subscribe to the channel. Um, whenever I'm getting new information, whenever I'm learning something new, I'm trying to share it on here. Because if I go looking for it and I don't find it, I want to make sure I've got videos like this. So I'd love it if you could subscribe. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will catch you next time.